Welcome to another episode of People with Passion for Pets. Today we are talking to Ellie and Tom with The Dog and Us. Together with their rescue dog, Alaska, Ellie and Tom explore our U.S. national parks and share all things dog-friendly. So hello, Ellie and Tom. Welcome. Hi, Hi guys. <laughs> Thanks for... Uh, finding a, a spot to talk to us. <laughs> Thanks for having us on. Yeah, thank you. So you guys are the the people behind the website, The Dog and Us, and the YouTube channel by the same name. And you're all about traveling with Dog Alaska, which I can see her peeking yep. through you two. There she is. <laughs> Alaska. Very good. <laughs> she is. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about what you guys do. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we, uh, Tom is Australian and we've been living in Australia for the past four years. And in November of last year, we moved back to the States and um, we really wanted uh, to bring our rescue dog with us and check out all the national parks in the US. So she's actually a rescue dog from Australia. And um, we wanted to make sure we could bring her wherever we went. Yeah, so, so we flew her over. That yeah. was a bit of a debacle. That was <laughs> very stressful and a lot of paperwork, but that was something we knew that we would probably have to do yeah. at some point. So Yeah, yeah. but she's um she's yeah, an international dog. So we're really <laughs> we made sure she was crate trained and everything so she wasn't an anxious on the plane. So um, on your YouTube channel, I know that your sort of your mission or the thing that got you started is uh, trying out all the national parks on Dog Friendly. Yeah. Are you expanding a little bit? Because then I saw, which is uh, also something what we do, which I think is great, is just kind of showing like dog friendly cities and um, dog friendly yeah. other things. Yeah. Yeah, I think our our main focus is is national parks um, because in Australia. Uh, domestic animals are not allowed anywhere at all in a national park. So not even in a car inside the national park. Oh, really? Park. Yeah. yeah. Not, They're like, very strict. And, and here we Australia. thought our national parks were in Yeah, exactly. Know, right? yeah. Right? So, and, and Australia is has more national parks than any other country in the world. Um, <laughs> it's one big national park. Which basically means it just, it, therefore, camping with your dog in Australia or hiking with your dog in Australia becomes extremely dif difficult. Mm. Um, so that was one of the reasons, one of the, one of the reasons we, we started this kind of thing over here was because we knew that we could at least go to national parks and, and, um, we kind of wanted a good time. to, yeah, still have a good time. Exactly. We would have been very limited if we tried to do it in Australia. So, and when we lived yeah. in, when we lived in the U S, um, our national parks were kind of like our haven, you know, cause we lived in Los Angeles and we'd always go to we'd always go to Sequoia and Yosemite and Joshua Tree. And that was kind of like our, we just fell in love with that, you know, that part of the country. So we were like, when we come back, we really want to spend as much time as possible. And we know it's, park we know it's so hard for people to, it's such a pain point, you know, not, you know, can't hardly go on any of the trails and yeah. there's all these, you know, it's really, but what we love is that we see people who, you know, just assume that they couldn't take their dog to a national park at all. Yeah. Um, but that's that's kind of far from the truth. You can camp in the, all of the campgrounds. So, in addition to um, to your YouTube channel, you also have a, a really nice website, and I noticed you have a blog. And then you you um, I think you just started a Facebook group too. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, do you want to talk about it all? Yeah, so we uh, just started uh, U.S. National Parks with Dogs. So um, we realized there was no kind of resource for people who wanted to bring their dogs on adventures and to the national parks. You know, we're, we're on a lot of RV groups and it's kind of like all the questions usually, where do you leave your dogs when you're going to a national park? And a lot of people say, just don't bring your dog, kennel it, you know? And we, were, we didn't really, I don't know, we, we, that didn't settle with us very well. And so we were like, oh, we should build a community that people can share their own experiences so that dog owners can recreate responsibly in the national parks. Yeah, I I really kind of am pretty passionate about that because I know that the US national parks were, you know, they're made for the people. And 
when I'd see on other other groups national park fan pages I'd see people saying you can't bring your dog to the national park mm. well well for some dog owners that means that that they can't go to the the national park like because us. some people can't yeah. can't travel away from their dog um so I took a lot of issue with that and <laughs> So that's why I decided to start the group and and show people that it, it definitely can be done. Um, you want to you know go see El Cap with your dog. You can go see El Cap with your dog. You know so <laughs> yeah, exactly. and we have yeah. over a thousand members, which is really exciting. We didn't know it would grow as fast as it did, but um, people share it with their friends and people that they know that have dogs. So it's super positive, and we all yeah we all have the exact same challenge, and yeah. you know and and. A lot, oftentimes it's a lot of people recommending areas outside the national parks to hike, you know, really close areas. And we think that we, we, that's kind of what we like to do. You know, we'll go to the surrounding national forest and, mm. and take Alaska on a really big hike the first day. And then the next day we might do more of our driving kind of tour. So, yeah, in fact, we, we had that same experience on our way back when we uh, came back from Oregon, we drove through Utah and Jim had not been to Bryce Canyon. So we stopped at Bryce. And unfortunately, we came through right in October, which I didn't realize that's the absolute busiest time, I guess, for yeah. that area. Perfect weather. And so it was yeah. it was really, really crazy there. And of course, just like most national parks, I mean, the dogs were allowed in the campgrounds and on the you know topside trails, but not into the canyon. But yep. this, uh, this nice lady there at the campground, she said, you know, you got to go to Red Canyon. And so we have this like beautiful hike just outside of Bryce Canyon. And there's all these beautiful hiking trails to, to yeah. see there. So it was one of those yep. experiences. Yeah. That's yeah awesome. And those, those get overshadowed. If, if people think that they want to go to Bryce Canyon and then they hear that they can't go to Bryce Canyon with the dog, well, then they're going to miss out on those surrounding places as well. Yeah. 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 That's incredible. That's going. Alaska, Alaska is three. three. Yeah, we got her as about eleven week old puppy. She oh was, wow! She was yeah, a she was, she was a she was an little. abandoned puppy actually. They found her walking the streets. We think that she so in Australia they do a lot of pig pig hunting, wild boar hunting. Okay, yeah, yeah. We think she was bred um, for that. Bred for that, but then, but then maybe wasn't big enough actually. Or yeah, she might have been the runt of a, of a of a pig hunting litter or something like that. I don't know if you guys know. Yeah, the breed bull Arab, but it's. No. That's kind of like they're usually way bigger than her. It's like yeah. it's it's one. It's I think it, I think it's officially a breed now, but it's kind of um, only you know come to be in the last twenty years or something. It's like it's just a okay. mixture of dogs, but it's 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 now so been bred so many times that it's becoming a real breed called bull Arab. It's a mixture of like a pointer, a greyhound, and a pit, bull. Um, a pit bull or something. American like that. That, was like, that was like the three breeds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. English Daffy. But she doesn't necessarily look like a purebred bull Arab. She, she looks like a purebred mutt. But then bull, bull Arabs aren't really <laughs> purebred anyway. So it's, she's, long story, she's a mutt, but she kind of resembles cool. a purebred mutt. Well, cool. okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she was a, a 11 week old puppy that they found uh, wandering the streets in Brisbane. So um, when we got her like a week after that, um, rescued her from, a, from the place that picked her up, Animal Welfare oh. League. And yeah. yeah, and she was named Alaska. They named her Alaska for whatever reason. And we didn't really want to change too much. We know she was under a lot of stress as a puppy and she was answering to Alaska. So we were like, oh, well, we'll just, she's Alaska now. So, so you know, they, you have to travel to Alaska now, huh? Yeah, yeah that's kind of going to be Alaska to Alaska. That's going to be the culmination of many five things. Five-year goal. <laughs> yeah, Alaska's always been maybe two our, years. Like major bucket list place to visit. So yeah, Hopefully. yeah, we thought it was a sign because we've always been wanting to go to Alaska since we met. So yeah. We'll so did to... you have to? Sorry, did you have to do anything special to to get her ready for the traveling, or was she kind of just a turnkey type of thing? um we yeah luckily we'd crate trained a plenty um we ellie doesn't like to talk about this but we um <laughs> leading up to it you know maybe like the last few weeks we like gave her longer periods in her crate just to get used to it you know so we went, away, we went away for work we like she she was in a crate for 18 hours um on the flight coming over from australia so i didn't want her to be used to being in a crate for a couple of hours you know so we, we would do four hour stints in there and just I wanted her to be used to that I knew that would be less uh stressful than than just doing 18 hours you know going from 
a couple of hours to 18 hours. So we did that. Um, but yeah, when we got her, we knew that we were, you know, we have homes both here and in Australia. So we knew that at some point it could be likely that we would be coming over here. So we, we had her, we had her ready for that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we put a lot of energy into training her, making sure she was well trained just because she's a big she's a big girl and she's also we also knew we she would have to be pretty flexible and um, you know easy to travel with. So we wanted to make sure that she was well trained and yeah. Comfortable and, in your van. Yeah. Exactly. Comfortable yeah. in a van, comfortable in a crate. And now she's obsessed with her crate. She just loves just going in there when she needs her own time. It's Perfect. good. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's hard to get her out proud. sometimes. That's yes. the worst part. It's like, <laughs> deal with humans? I don't think so. I'm staying here. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's great. Yeah. yeah. As people in, in an international relationship, we're always thinking of when we have to go to the other country. So we want to make sure mm. she's, you know, e easy to fly with. And um, yeah, just getting her back to Australia might be an issue, but it'll be all good. <laughs> oh well, yeah she's like, used to it now <laughs> yeah <laughs> i remember years ago when i um came to the u.s i brought uh, collie with me and i know how stressed out i was because he had to fly in cargo and it was such yeah. a long flight so yeah. Yeah, yeah we were very lucky with alaska she was she was like nothing had happened so we were she's oh, just happy awesome. to eat yeah yes. she was eating food right away just seemed like she'd just taken a long sleep in a crate so it wasn't too bad at all <laughs> awesome that's so cool. <laughs> and so now you guys are full time on the road, traveling in the U.S. Yeah. So we, we, yeah, we live full time in our travel trailer, and um, our mission, kind of, with the dog in us, is to to visit as many of the um, national park service sites that we can. So um, monuments and also the parks themselves, and national seashores and national historic sites and all of those. Um, our plan is to visit them all and we haven't got a deadline on that, but <laughs> it's um, been hard this year, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. yeah but everything's been hard this year, but we're, that's our goal. We yeah. still want to, yeah, try to check out all the dog friendliness in the national parks. Cause there's, there's lots of dog friendly areas and trails and campgrounds that we can explore. So yeah, we want to, yeah, we're super grateful that we can take Alaska to those places and we really want to, you know, part of our mission is to try and capture that and share that with people and um, provide them with resources and inspiration to do that themselves. Um, so they can, you know, take their dog everywhere or everywhere that they're allowed. So that's how I kind of found you guys, because I think it's a great resource to kind of see somebody that has taken a dog there because you're always a little bit on the fence with national parks. Sometimes you hear they're not as dog friendly. Um, so I think when somebody has a personal experience and shares that, that certainly helps somebody else that wants to travel. Now, how do you, um, how do you kind of plan your routes? Well, well, we've kind of been on the West Coast this year just to be closer to my parents, just in case something happened. But um, we kind of want, we really wanted to go to the Pacific Northwest. So we made our way up there and um, there was no plan at all, really. Yeah, we just kind of <laughs> isn't that wonderful? That's great. Yeah, yeah it's it was <laughs> good. very grateful for that because yeah. we kind of were just exploring and wanted to go where we wanted to go. And yeah, we had places that we'd missed a lot while we were living in Australia for the last four years. So Sequoia, we took this year, yeah, we took this this year to go visit those places. So and it was a whole like a whole different perspective having a dog with us, you know before we were doing all the trails and, you know, hiking and exploring everything. And, you know, with a dog, it's, you didn't, you can't go on every trail. So it's you have to plan ahead. Yeah. Totally. And research ahead because you don't always have uh, internet service in the park. Yeah. So that's what, that's something that's we one. kind of, but we just went, knowing where you can go. I mean, you can always talk to a ranger, but this year they were kind of hard to come by as yeah. well. You know? <laughs> But yeah, yeah I think the, the National Park Service, you know, we whenever we're going to a national park, we always just type in, you know, Joshua Tree National Park and the word pets after it. And it's always the first thing on Google is the pets policy in that park. Um, yeah, and we've, yeah, we've actually found a few little loopholes and stuff that, that, that have enabled us to actually see more than the website would actually allude to. So, um, that's but that's cool. kind of just been our personal experience, but hopefully we can share that with people. Yeah. <laughs> 
So right now you're traveling, uh, you're traveling in a van. You've got like a high roof van or something. Yeah. So we, we've had a lot of evolutions of mobile living, um, <laughs> in the last few years, but currently we have a yeah high roof cargo van that we initially, we, um, converted it into a camper. Um, so we had a bed and a toilet and we've solar panels, fridge, all that kind of stuff. Um, and that's, so we had that kind of, uh, towing the travel trailer that we live in so that we could kind of have a more nimble vehicle. So some, some like some national parks and campgrounds don't allow a certain length of mm -hmm. RV. So yeah, it's e much easier in a van or, yeah. a, or a tent. So oh, we, yeah. we could have the best, we tried to have the best of both worlds where we had <laughs> our kind of home base and then we could take the van on, on trips um, into the national parks and that worked out pretty well. Um, it was, we were pretty lucky to have that. Um, but the, the end goal for the van was kind of always to be a work van. So um, the bed and the camper parts out of the van now. And it's, it's a, still solar powered with a fridge. It's still solar powered <laughs> with a fridge and a toilet. Oh, nice. um, and Alaska <laughs> loves traveling in the van. It's kind mm -hmm. of perfect for her because it's, it has no windows in the back. Um, and it's really well insulated. And the, um, you know, the air conditioning conditions the whole space. Um, but she's very much a kind of, visual stimulated dog so mm. traveling in the car just really gets yeah. her into kind of like all right, what do i need to do do i need to get that what mm -hmm. am i doing so yeah. so it's just the perfect travel van for her that that it was either that or a motorhome would have would have kind of been the only two things we think would have worked for her so oh good and you had mentioned uh, that you're you're using it as a work van i understand that you just got certified both of you just got certified to do rv repair congratulations on that yeah, especially yeah. When you're yeah that was <laughs> That was a big thing for this year. That was the, the start of our, our repair business and our inspection business. So, um, yeah. you want to talk about Go ahead, that? Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, so where we, can we um, find you when we want exactly. you to our, inspect our RV? <laughs> the new RV we're going to get. <laughs> oh, yeah. Of course. Um, well, we're on uh, online at meetyoutherepair.com. And then we have uh, a Facebook and then a Yelp and uh, an Instagram meet you there RV repair. So, um, yeah, we, uh, we love our, the RV lifestyle. We love traveling in an RV and we've had so many and, um, we've had so many RVs and we've realized they all have the same issues kind of. So we thought that it was a good idea to get trained and help other people, you know, kind of realize their, um, RV adventure potential. Um, we really want to empower people uh, to travel in an RV. Uh, That's really yeah. cool. And our, yeah. RVs are very high maintenance items. And so a, high maintenance. a lot of people don't realize that, you know, they, they think they'll get it and it'll just be like their, their house. Um, but so. we learned that, you know, it's very different traveling in an RV versus yeah. living in an RV. Absolutely. So, mm -hmm. you know, you yeah, we have a saying that uh, we're saying uh, when something goes, you know, every time you go out for a trip, uh, something seems to inadvertently, you know, need repair. And we are we're this, now, yeah, we're know? RVing now. We call the family, go, we're RVing now. And they go, what's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, How far RV did you make it this time? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We want people to continue camping, you know, we you know for so many people they might only go out for you know a couple of weeks out of the year in their rv and and if their fridge isn't working or their air conditioner isn't working then that's that trip trip ruined, trip ruined you know so yeah. we want to be there and i think because we do kind of travel to a lot of different places with the dog in us i think it's just going to work really well to help people out that are you know in a bit of a bind you know they might be in the middle of joshua tree and can't even make a phone call to to, to get some help so that's kind of the concept behind meet you there that will be there to help you so usually when we're in the rv park we'll always see a service truck coming in you know to help somebody out somewhere so it's yeah <laughs> i think you'll be fine <laughs> yeah i think so one of the services we offer is um inspections so pre-purchase inspections um because when people buy rvs they buy brand new rvs and think they're going to come absolutely perfect but they obviously yeah surprise they have a lot of problems yeah, straight exactly. from the factory. So we offer, um, uh, we have an inspection side of our business. And with that inspection, the um, association is called the NRVIA and they have a locator. So um, when someone's looking to buy an RV, they can go to the NRVIA um, 
www.ghostbusters.org and then that'll you know that we update our lo location on that okay. locator so that people you know wherever whatever area we are in people will search that area and, and we'll we'll be there and we also keep our social media and our facebook and our website up to date saying so where we are we're okay. current current location for repairs all that stuff. yeah so we have we just need yeah. to get into that group that's a great idea really yeah. good idea you know i'm i'm glad you're offering that we we uh keep telling about, you know, we dog, we're dog trainers and we always tell people that we offer temperament testing because one of our biggest thing in the book that we're gonna write uh, sometime soon is, <laughs> is, uh, is about choosing the right dog for your lifestyle. Because as you probably know, um, you know, different types of dogs don't necessarily go with certain types of lifestyle or it might be difficult for the dog. So, um, you know, so we always try to get people to say, hey, if you're gonna go out and you're gonna look for a new dog, let us help you make sure it's the right temperament, it's the right type of dog. Let's ask all the questions uh, yeah. to to have that dog be a lifetime um, member of your family. You know, that yeah. that's one of the biggest things that we wanna do. Absolutely, yeah, that, that consultation is is key for people. Yeah, and we when we rescued Alaska, they she just said, you know, they called her a cattle dog mix, which she kind of over, outgrew of that, but, um, in about a week. In about a week, she's way bigger <laughs> than cattle dog. But um, they just said, you know, she is a herding dog, so you have to make sure, you know, she's gonna get a lot of exercise. And so, we kind of took that to heart. We love hiking, so we love just taking her out and exploring with her. And it suits her breed. It suits her her need for exercise and you know sniffing and hiking. So. Yeah. yeah, especially if you if you live in a small space, right? Like you guys, obviously, and, and we oh, yeah. too, when we're traveling with our dogs in the RV, um, even though ours are, are smaller dogs, they, they're both, you know, uh, um, Jack Russell Terrier and an, an Australian Shepherd, they're both very active dogs that need a lot of mental stimulation in, in addition to just, you know, mm -hmm. physical exercise as well. Yeah. Yeah, in the, it's been a little bit harder in the winter going... And with COVID happening, um, you know, going on hikes and doing that stuff, but we're getting, we're trying to get into a groove where we're able to exercise her more and hike more and all that stuff. Yeah, I think being in an RV, there's just a lot of logistics too that take up a lot of time. Yeah. Luckily this year, I suppose, as we kind of transitioned into that, it was easily a bit easier because we weren't working, but now to, to running the business and just the logistics of moving the rv around and also getting alaska you know and it's, it's hard because the whole reason we started the dog in us and the whole reason that we're, we're doing this lifestyle is for her um making sure that we have have time for her to hike her every day so it's going to be hard to kind of find that balance but that's like anybody getting a job a dog you've kind of got to think about that and think yeah. about your lifestyle and how the dog will will fit into that yeah which is really good and important that you're working around her and that's it's very uh, it's very nice that you do that because she's still part of the family. So it, you know you yeah, got to do what you got to do. She's our child. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Absolutely, we understand yeah. that statement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what's coming up for you guys? So this next summer, where are you, or maybe even right now, where are you headed to now? Yeah. So we're just in Albuquerque at the moment. Um, just um, for my Christmas. parents live here. Uh, yeah, Ellie's parents live here. So. Yeah. So we we're here for Christmas to spend some time with them, and then. Um, we'll probably be heading to Arizona for the cold parts oh. of the winter. And then, and then, uh, we're going to make our way to Bend, Oregon. We love Oregon so much. So, um, yeah, hopefully, you know, we're taking one day at a time this year, but hopefully that, that all pans out. We really, when we went to Oregon, we just fell in love with it. So we're going to try to migrate there for the summer and check it out. We, it wasn't really our plan, honestly. We just, you know, <laughs> we were going to be going east uh, next year was kind of the plan and try to go to a lot of national parks over there. But we were spent some time in Oregon and unfortunately it's kind of a magnet to our hearts. It's calling it's you back. Yeah, <laughs> back. We felt so at home there. So yeah, yeah. when you let Alaska off on the beach, that'll be uh, that'll be really cool. Because yeah. she just won't know what to do with the salt water, the room, the sand. Yeah. <laughs> so just run and go, what do I do now? <laughs> you love the water. That was like when she saw snow for the first time. That was yeah. pretty cool. Oh, that's cute. Uh, <laughs> Very exciting. So what does she weigh right now? What does Alaska weigh? You, can't, you can only see her head. 
72. Her big head. 72 pounds. Her head carries most of the weight. <laughs> Her head carries most of the weight. That's all that brain in there. <laughs> very cute. That's very cute. Yeah, she's 72. She's pretty, pretty big dog. She's all muscle. She's muscle though. Yeah. It's just crazy how strong she is. Yeah. So she's, she's smaller than a big dog. I mean, I guess we don't feel like she's that big, but then we see her around other dogs and she, we're like, oh wait, she's really big. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, she's pure muscle. So she's very strong. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. So um, share with us again. So we have a Facebook page. You have a oh, yeah. website, well, two websites, one for, <laughs> <laughs> and then you got your YouTube channel. And of course, for all of the viewers, we're going to share all of your links in the description below the video. So they'll be able yeah. to find you. See yeah. where you are and what you're up to. I got to <laughs> say, um, our Instagram too is probably, Ellie runs our Instagram. She's a fabulous writer. So <laughs> I think that's something that a lot of dog owners should, should check out. We try to, you know, make the Instagram not just photos of Alaska, but, you know, resources for people and trails that they can check out. So um, that's the dog in us. And then the Facebook group is U.S. National Parks with Dogs. And that's kind of like a community of adventure dog owners who really want to explore the national parks with their dogs because it is possible. And then we have our small business that we just started, uh, Meet You There RV Repair. So uh, our mobile RV tech business. Um, so yeah, we're excited to, to help other RVers on their journeys, but that's, that's our project at the moment. But the dog in us is always ongoing because it's our life. It's our life and yeah, we're so, so cool. passionate about traveling with, her, with our dog, our rescue dog. So Alaska is our child. So we wanna make sure our life is, you know, good for her as well. Cause she, dogs only have a short time with us yeah, so right, right. we want to make sure she gets all the love and exploration she deserves <laughs> <laughs> well that's awesome i can you know definitely that's i guess why i found you on uh, facebook and uh youtube because that's definitely our um our mission too is to yeah. you know find dog friendly places around the united states and tell other people where they can uh, take their dogs and enjoy adventures with their dogs so that's awesome yeah. yeah and there's not a lot of resources out there for you know especially on youtube of traveling with your dog and so it's good to meet other people that are in the same kind of realm traveling with their dog and trying to make you know their life dog friendly so it's right, nice yeah. nice to yeah <laughs> i'm glad we met you too <laughs> <laughs> Well, good. Hopefully we'll meet on the road sometime. If you come yeah. to Arizona, you're always welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. It'll yeah. be great. Or if you guys find yourself in Oregon again next yeah. year. All right. Well, thank you again for being on the show and we'll definitely keep following you and hopefully some of our viewers will do the same. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, B and Jim. Thank yeah, you for, for having, having us. us on. Yeah. yeah. For more information on what Ellie and Tom have to offer, check the description below the video. We'll hope you enjoyed this interview, and until next time, keep your paws on the road. <laughs>